Hi, I'm Nick Natarella with AdWise Creative. Today we're gonna to go over how to set up your podcast and we're gonna go step by step, just in case we don't miss anything, okay? All for you, coming up next. Let's go over the steps one by one to give you the roadmap you need to get your podcast up and running. From idea to more customers and clients. I've broken it down to three key steps. First, we go with the planning steps, then we'll go with recording and editing, and finally, promotion and monetization. The first thing you really need to do to lay a great foundation for your podcast is first talk about the topic. What is the topic you're going to cover? Chances are it's going to be spurred from your business and you already know the overarching qualities of that. You live it every day. You talk customers and clients every day. That's going to be the overall foundation of your podcast. The tips, the techniques, the, the things that you want to teach. What is it that people always get wrong? What is it that you want to go up to the rooftop and shout from the rooftops, no, that's not right, you gotta do it this way. That's the stuff that keeps you up at night. Those are the topics that you really, really, really wanna cover. And there's another technique to find those. To start with, you're gonna wanna write down 20 episode topics. Not necessarily titles, don't get tripped up in titles yet, but what are the elements that you want to cover? Take five minutes, and I literally mean five to seven minutes to write down 20 topics. If you can't write down 20 topics on paper, there's a good chance that your podcast might not be sustainable after a very, very short time. What if you only come up with five or six? That's like a month, barely a month, just over a month's worth of material. You want this to go long term. Now, something else to consider is the big subjects that you can break into smaller topics. Do a deep dive into the minutia and those become really good topics as well. Your overall attitude in all of these, in all of these episodes is going to be to teach. Prepare yourself, because I'm gonna get really blatantly obvious about this. This might make you a little uncomfortable. You wanna teach in such a way, not so much from an academic perspective, okay? But definitely what they need to know as if they were going to do it without you, or dare I say, take over your job. Yes, you want to teach at that level. I'm talking give away the secret sauce. Give it away. And I know you're gonna be sitting there, some people are gonna be watching this video, you might be one of them going, are you kidding me? There's no way I'm doing that. That's what keeps me in business. Guess what, here's a little secret. The people who think they can do it on their own and they're gonna show you, you don't want them as clients. So don't worry about them. That's a great way to have them take what they need and run out the door and never see them again. That's actually working to your advantage. But there are a bunch of people who go, you know what, that's a great idea. I like what you're doing. And if they can relate to it, if they see themselves winning at that technique, then you don't have to sell them on it over and over and over again every time you have your weekly or monthly or quarterly catch up or something like that. They already know it and they know they should be doing it. So it's really easy because when people relate to it, they will naturally gravitate towards you to be your client. It really works to your advantage. Now, once you've got everything settled and you've picked your topic and you know what you're going to be teaching, pick a title, and this should be a benefit-laden title for your customer, for your client. What are they going to get out of it? What are they going to learn? What is the transformation that they're going to get? Again, if you're talking investments, retire early. If you're talking about fitness, to feel better than they've ever felt in their lives, that kind of thing. To lose the weight, to be in shape, to be able to go out and play with the grandkids or the kids or go play golf again for the first time in 20 years. Whatever the ultimate goal is, make that the transformation. Make that, somehow incorporate that into the title of your podcast. Write a description of your podcast. Now that you've got the title and you know who you're talking to and you know what you'll be talking about, those are all the key elements that all come together in the description. Be sure to include the name, your name, who you are, and give them a little brush of your credentials. I've been advising for 35 years. I've been doing X for 15 years. I've been doing this since I was a kid. Anything along those lines, just short and sweet. It doesn't have to be, we don't need your resume or your vitae. Just a little snippet of proof that shows, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And hopefully they'll be thinking, hmm, 
this person knows what they're talking about. That's the thought that you want them to have. And it doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be detailed. Just enough proof to give you the credibility. And again, include what they're going to learn and ultimately what is that transformational change that they're going to have by hanging out on your podcast and learning all this stuff themselves. What is the big change that they're looking for? Another top consideration is your format. Is this going to be just you? Will you have a co-host that will be there the entire time as opposed to, say, a guest who would come in from time to time? Again, if this is your business podcast, it would not be hard to have, say, other partners or other employees or something like that, bring them in from time to time and give their expertise as well. Then once you've got all these different format, and, and especially when you've got the format in place, now you're ready to move forward with something really solid and tangible. And this is the one thing that's really gonna blow your mind. Go ahead and get your artwork designed. I would strongly suggest you hire somebody to do this. Unless you're a graphic artist yourself, and that would be awesome. Obviously, you would have an amazing connection to your own artwork. But get that produced and have it done for you. And that would be a huge boost to morale and a great present to yourself when you finally see it. You know what it's like? A friend of mine is an author. He wrote his second or third book, and he just got the first hardback copy. I mean, he's like a little kid at Christmas. You will be the exact same way when you get to see your artwork, your podcast artwork for the very first time. Do yourself a favor and do that for yourself. All right, we're about halfway through. Take a breath. I know it's a little overwhelming. You've probably been writing this stuff down like crazy. Is there something that I mentioned that needs a deep dive? Is there something that you need a little bit more explanation on? Make a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to either answer you directly in the comments, I read them all, or maybe we need another video for that for everybody to see. Either way, I will definitely answer it. And that brings us to the second stage, the recording and editing stage. So get your equipment together, whatever you're going to be using, whether it's your phone or maybe some microphones, don't forget your cables, your backup cables, and your backup to the backup cables, your audio recording equipment, maybe a small mixing board. Maybe you can go straight into your computer. Maybe you need a little tiny interface. If you're doing like an interview or if you're doing a uh, co-host type of thing, there's a little tiny mixing board. It's actually called an interface. Two microphones come in, one cable comes out and goes right into your computer. It pretty much acts like a, like a mixing board, but for some reason, because you're going from microphones to USB connection, it's called an interface. So get all of that equipment together, have it all plugged in, start testing it, start going through it, start recording some episodes so you can see your levels, you can hear what it sounds like after you've recorded it, and then you'll eventually get into editing. But before we get into the editing, also choose your podcast hosting. Now, how this works is you don't, necessarily post straight to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You have a host and this is where you actually put your data. This is where you're gonna upload your episodes. And there are tons of them out there, a whole bunch of them and all different kinds of prices, all the way from free, all the way up to 20, maybe even $50 a month. What are you getting for that 20 to $50 a month? A, storage space. B, storage frequency. How often are you going to put episodes up there, how long they're going to store it for you. 99.9% .9 of them are forever. But the free versions, for example, there are a couple free versions out there where you can do your first five episodes and when you upload number six, number one is gonna drop off. They're gonna delete it. When you upload seven, number two is gonna get deleted. You see how that works? So you've always got to rotate, you've got a rolling five episodes, but ultimately you don't want that. So if there's any way that you can get into a paid subscription, please do that as soon as you possibly can. Now, some of the other things that you get are recording software. Sometimes they have a recording and editing software built into their platforms. Some of them are better than others. Some of them have social media and when you take a giant podcast, they'll chop it up into smaller sections for you so you can use as promotional stuff. They'll have that built into the hosting. Those are gonna be the more expensive ones. Little things like that that you wanna compare, kind of weigh out, what do I need? What do I don't need? What might I need in the future? If you can set yourself up now and if you can say get the base package, and then maybe expand later, so much the better. But if you actually try to switch hosts from company A to company B, something's gonna get mocked, something's gonna get lost, something's gonna get dropped, something's gonna get messed up. So if you can find the one that you wanna stay with, please go there first. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say about the podcast hosting service, once you upload to there, all of those guys, all the places where people go to listen would be distributed from your hosting company. That's how that works. And then the most important part, Start recording. 
crack that mic, start talking about what you're going to be talking about. Always have an outline, go off of an outline just to make sure that you've covered everything that you want to cover in that episode. I highly recommend you not script it out because we want to hear you. We want to hear your natural delivery. I work off of outline. I work off of notes and stuff like that. All the times that I've looked down to check my notes, we've edited those out. But this is me just naturally talking. I do not have a teleprompter in front of me. I'm just going off the top of my head. And again, you will probably too, because you know this stuff cold. This is what you live with. So it's not going to be hard for you once you get into the flow. The third and final step is promotion and monetization. Now I talked a little bit about promotion a moment ago when I was talking about podcast hosting services, chopping up your larger content into smaller pieces, sending out quote cards, sending out smaller snippets to give people a sample, doing invitations, a really great way of great free way to promote your own podcast, especially if you have guests, send them a copy of it and especially use a quote card or some type of a, like a Instagram type shape card that you can design on Canva talking about the upcoming, the, the date, the release, the topic, the person you're interviewing. If the person you're interviewing has an email list or a following, you supply that to them, they post it to their people and their people now listen to you because they want to hear their personal favorite on your podcast. It's a very easy way to expand your audience and it's free. A lot of people will promote your podcast because they're on it. Very simple. Of course, you can do paid ads. That's not uncommon to just to start to advertise your podcast in general. You can do social media, all types of announcements, posts, audio, video, quote cards, all that kind of stuff. It all builds up. SEO is your friend. If you answer the questions that people are asking, and I've gone over this on many occasions in some of my other videos, check those out. The SEO will help drive traffic to your podcast as well. Everybody wants to get into monetization. There are several ways that you can go about this, especially when it comes to just a straight audience. A lot of times what ends up happening is you build up the audience and once you have say 10,000 or 100,000 downloads or listens or something like that, that's when advertisers take notice. Now, it takes a while to get to that point. In the meantime, you can do stuff like Patreon, where people will have additional content that you don't release on the podcast, but they can access it for a small donation whether it be $5 a month or $10 a month or something like that. There's another one called Buy Me A Coffee where they can just make a donation to you. You can set up affiliate links. What are some of the things that you're talking about that people would use? For example, I talk a lot about lighting equipment. I could get an affiliate link to a lighting company and anybody who buys lighting equipment through my affiliate link, I'll end up getting a few cents. Pat on the back, I don't know. But <laughs> enough affiliate links and you can actually make a little nice piece of change, at least enough to offset the cost of the production of the podcast itself. And then there are other ways, like maybe off the side, you sell t-shirts or coffee mugs or something like that with the, with the logo on it. That's always an easy reach from there. It's only made when people order it. It ships out on its own. You don't have to mess with it, but at least you set it up and there's a couple bucks every once in a while. But now if we're talking about a business channel, if we're talking about a business podcast, one of the first things that you're probably going to get are clients. It's a different business model. Another is based on millions of views or downloads. And this one is showing your smarts, spotlighting what you do for clients, showing them how you do it. And people go, wow, that's pretty cool. I want that for me. Can I hire you to do that? Absolutely. That's what we do. So it's much easier to actually get clients than it is to get paid off of the typical listener model. It really is. To that end, you ultimately want to make listeners, turn listeners into clients, especially for your business podcast. I've got a free download for you down below. Just click on the link below and get engaging your audience. The three secrets to skyrocket your podcast success. It's how you can take a one little mindset, a couple little tweaks in your language and turn listeners into your best friends and best friends into champions of the channel. So get your free copy just by clicking below right now. I'm Nick Natarella. Thank you for watching.